Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm previewing Wales against Australia, both sides' final game of 2022. And I'm going to say why it is a pivotal game for Wayne Pivak, the Wales coach. If they lose this game, then I think he may well be out of a job come Monday morning, but we'll wait and see. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also drop a comment down below. Anything to do with this game, but in particular, if Wales lose, should Wayne Pivak be no longer be the Wales head coach? Let me know. All right, let's get into it. So the team news has been out for a little while for this game. Sometimes in these previews, I run through the full 15s, but given that the teams have been out for a bit of time now, I'd imagine most people would have already seen the lineups. So rather than just going through the 15, I'm going to go through the headlines, the changes, and kind of what's interesting. And then in the video, I will be explaining just why I think it's such a pivotal game for Wayne Pivak. In fact, could you say outside of World Cup semi-finals and Grand Slam deciders, that this is as big a game as Wales has had in recent history, in a way, in terms of the future of the head coach. I know there's nothing riding on it in terms of a Six Nations title or knockout in a World Cup or anything like that, but it just feels significant to me. Let me know what you think down below. But in terms of the team selection that Wayne Pivak has gone for, Six changes from that defeat to Georgia. No real surprise. First of all, many in force. This match is outside of the test window, so players that play outside of Wales aren't available. Uh, and also, such a terrible performance against Georgia, they surely had to change it up. So you've got young Joe Hawkins. He's going to be making his debut in the centre for Wales. That's very, very interesting. Come back onto that in a minute. And then Alan Wynne-Jones, Rio Dyer, Lee Halfpenny, uh, Gareth Anscombe and Talupe Faletau all also come back in as well. So a bit of experience coming back in in the likes of Falatau and Alan Wynne-Jones and some other interesting things as well. Also, I mentioned it's outside of the test window. A number of those players that aren't available, that's Lewis Rees-Samit, Nick Tompkins, Chris Chunza, Daffid Jenkins and Tommy Raffel who all return to their clubs in the English Premiership. Hopefully that, by the way, on a side note, in terms of having these games outside of test windows, when we get some sort of global calendar, which we hope comes in in the next couple of years, that might solve some of those issues because it is a bit of a mess. Australia are affected not quite as much as, as Wales, but they're also missing some players because of that, which just seems absolutely ridiculous. But there we go. I want to talk about Joe Hawkins into the centres. That's an interesting one. A young guy getting his debut right at the end of the the tour right at the end of the year for Wales. He's been part of the squad for the last month. He's been training with them, plays for the Ospreys. Um, I think this is down to injury more than anything else. Owen Watkin came in and started against Georgia in place of Nick Tompkins, who was available. And part of the reason for that, I think, was Wayne Pivak wanted to work on combinations and give Watkin and George North more time playing together in the centres. Watkins now picked up an injury, so he's been forced into another change. Also, Johnny w Williams has already been ruled out through injury. Nick Tompkins goes back to the Premiership. So they're a little bit light in those centres. Joe Hawkins comes in. What a great opportunity for him. I hope he takes it with both hands. But it's a tough environment to be coming into in a way. You know, a side on the back foot, not that much confidence. Haven't won much this year at all. Interested to see how he goes. But I think, you know, when you're decimated by injuries and have selection issues like this, again, there's just a, a lack of continuity, it feels to me, in this Wales squad at the moment. Not just in the centres. I'll get onto some of the other positions as well. There's chopping and changing. Does Pivak know what his best team is? I'm not so sure. Uh, also, we've got the return of Alan Wynne-Jones, his first start since the end of the Six Nations when he started in that defeat against Italy. He came off the bench throughout the tour of South Africa. We haven't really seen him this autumn particularly. Certainly hasn't been part of the squad for the Georgia and Argentina games. How much longer does he have at international level? I think Adam Beard and Will Rowlands, when they're fit, are now the starting locks for Wales. Will Rowlands picked up an injury against Argentina, so he's since been out. But it's Will Rowlands and Adam Beard, the starters for me. And then when you've got the likes of Ben Carter, who's there coming through, that you know there are some younger guys who I'd quite like to see given more of an opportunity. And speaking of Ben Carter, he started against Georgia. He's dropped back down to the bench for this game against Australia. I'd have liked to see him be given more of an opportunity, um, given another opportunity to, to start in that second row. I understand what Alan Wynne-Jones brings. What is it, 167th international appearance? Something absolutely ridiculous like that. He's vastly experienced. Maybe you want him coming into a side that have just suffered such a bad defeat to Georgia. So it kind of makes sense. I can I can see the reason for bringing Alan Wynne in, into the side. But as I say, I would have 
quite like to have seen Ben Carter be given another opportunity. Uh, elsewhere, Lee Halfpenny, he's getting his first start since 2021, comes in at fullback. Again, experienced guy. I think that's there's no real complaints there. It is there Lewis Rees Samet has been playing fullback. He's not available because he returns to the Premiership. Halfpenny comes back in. Liam Williams is out injured. We know that Liam Williams will most likely be the fullback when he is fit. So no real complaints there. And also just a final thing to point out in terms of the Wales team news is it's a stronger bench in regards to the front row than last week, which was, you could argue, where the game completely turned in Georgia's favour. Wales got absolutely marmalised in the scrums once the replacement front rows came on. It was ridiculous. They were just flying backwards, scrum penalties to Georgia, gave them the penalty to kick into the lead and it won them a penalty towards the end of the game as well, um, which basically sealed the victory for Georgia. So a stronger bench. You've got Thomas Francis and Ryan Elias returning, a bit more experience there. I think that's very noticeable after what we saw against Georgia. Uh, also, just finally, three of 11 internationals Wales have won this year. They've only won three out of 11. That is pretty shocking. Australia isn't much better, though. Let's get on to the Wallabies. Australia have won four of 13 matches. So if you look at those records and you just want to take those statistics, these sides are probably quite evenly matched in that they've been struggling for consistency. They're probably low on confidence. Form's not very good. And also they're all missing players as well. This is the fifth international for Australia in as many weeks. They have had a very, very busy autumn and it's catching up at them. A whole raft of injuries to go along with all of them that they've suffered this year. I mean, this it must be unprecedented, the amount of injuries Australia have suffered this year. They were losing players in the summer when England were touring. They feel like they've had no consistency in terms of selection because they're just missing so many players. I wonder whether it's something that the Australian Rugby Union need to look at, maybe. Into, why is this happening? Is it just freak accident? This can happen in the game? Um, or is there something more in terms of recovery and rehabilitation and, and how the players are looked after? I don't know. It, it might be something that I'd imagine they look at. But in terms of this week, Michael Hooper, Taniella Tupu. Taniella Tupu's looked quite a bad injury as well by the sounds of it. Nick White, Rob Valentini, Andrew Callaway, Hunter Paisami and Dave Parecki all flying back to Australia. And that goes, you know, Lalakai Fuketti, Tom Banks, they got injured mid-tour. There's been loads more injuries, as I say, already throughout this year. It has been a pretty torrid year for the Wallabies in a year where they've shown us glimmers. They won the first test against England before losing the series. They had to picked up some good results in the Rugby Championship. But hey, look, you know, good away to France in Paris as well in the autumn, losing thanks to Damien Penno try. Um, so there's been glimmers of hope, but overall it's been a really disappointing year. They're also missing players because um, of the test window. So there's no Bernard Foley, um, which is really interesting because it means Ben Donaldson, who only came off the bench late against Italy to make his international debut, he's starting at 10 instead of Noah Lolasio which is a really interesting selection, I think, from Dave Rennie's point of view, rather than going with more experience. This isn't going to be easy for Australia. And you just look at their side, and I'm not, I'm not sure they've quite got the experience. If you look at the players that Wales have recalled, you look at Talupe Faletau and Alan Wynne-Jones coming back in, when you mix that with the likes of Justin Tipperick, Ken Owens and George North, the amount of caps Wales have there, I think, is more than the whole of the Australia team combined. Wales just have that bit more experience. And that's why I actually think that Wales will beat Australia this weekend. I think we will see a response. Losing to Georgia at home is such a bad result that I think Wales will respond. And given that the Wallabies have so many injuries, they are coming towards the end of what's been a really busy year. I think Wales will maybe just get the job done on them. But we shall wait and see. As I said at the start of the video, I think if Wayne Pivak loses, if Wales lose to the Wallabies, then I think he could well be out of the job. The reason he might not be is whether the Welsh Rugby Union can afford to fire him and pay him off. That could genuinely be a reason why they don't get rid of him. But in terms of results, there's no question that Wayne Pivak is under a huge amount of pressure. And there's no question that this is a massive, massive game for Wales because of that. Remember, subscribe to the channel if you are new here, like the video. Most importantly, though, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you think Wayne Pivak, if he wins, he will stay in a job? If he loses, he's gone. How do you see the whole situation? And the poor old Wallabies, just a really tough year. I do feel really sorry for them. I mentioned the list of injuries. Quay Cooper, I haven't mentioned. He's been out injured. Karevi, we've barely seen because he's been injured. Maybe in 2023, World Cup year, if they can get those players back, we're going to see a much stronger version of the Wallabies. I think we probably will. But as for 2022, it's been another tough old year. All right, I'll see you in the next one.